Hello everyone, this is Sandspade and welcome to another tutorial in the Buttons Design and GameMaker Studio 2.3 series. In this tutorial, we'll be creating a mouse manager and solving the problem that we had in the last tutorial where we could select multiple buttons at the same time. When we made the slider, we created a problem. I want to be able to move the slider around without having to hold my mouse or finger directly over the button, but that meant that my mouse could be over one button while also grabbing or selecting and grabbing the slider, meaning multiple buttons could be selected at the same time, and I needed a way to fix that. So my solution, which I'll be going over in this video, is a mouse manager, which is a centralized abstracted interface. Managers can go by different names. In the GMC community, I see them called controllers a lot. They're essentially a method of managing or controlling a group of objects or data or things versus those things interacting or those instances interacting uh, with each other and controlling themselves. I'm not really the best person to talk about managers. The idea comes from other programming languages, which I don't have a lot of experience in, so I'll stop there. But if you want some interesting reading, Google managers and whether or not you should use them. In general, the consensus seems to be that they are very useful in certain instances, but you shouldn't overuse them. Here are two diagrams that sort of illustrate the two different ways we could have solved the problem. We needed to only have one button selected at a time. The buttons need a way to communicate with each other. One method would be to simply have every button talk to every other button. If a button wants to know whether it can be selected, it goes and checks with every other instance of a button in the room, sees if they're selected, and if so, doesn't get selected. Another option, which is the option we're going to choose, is to have some sort of centralized manager. And instead of each button checking with every other button, they check with the manager, and the manager will tell them whether or not they can be selected, whether or not another button is selected, etc. To elaborate on this diagram a little bit more, we have our mouse manager, which is a place that will store the information uh, and data that all the buttons can access. Then we will have our buttons. And when they want to know if they can be selected, they will talk to the mouse manager and the mouse manager will tell them. When they become selected, they will tell the mouse manager that they are selected and the mouse manager will track that as well. They'll use scripts to communicate, which provides a nice level of abstraction because it means that if we want to change how the mouse manager is set up, all we have to change is the mouse manager and the scripts that talk to the mouse manager. And as long as we don't rename those scripts, no code will have to change in the buttons. All right, let's jump over to the code. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create a mouse manager. And now that we have a manager and some buttons, I'm actually going to put them in their own groups. Put the managers in theirs. And then create one for the buttons. And put all of the buttons in theirs. Now, for the mouse manager, we're going to need a couple variables. So let's initialize those. We will want button selected. We'll default it to false and button ID which will equal or default to no one. Then we're going to want a begin step event. And the reason we want the begin step event is because we want this to happen before the step event of any other instance. We wanna make sure that this check is done first. And what we're going to do is we're gonna say button ID equals instance position mouse X mouse Y, and button parent. If you don't understand instance position or how it works, you should look it up in the manual. But briefly, it will return the instance ID of a position. So in this case, we're using the mouse's position, and it will use the mask. And if there is no instance there, it will return no one. And that's why button ID defaults to no one. That's going to be the default if it doesn't find anything, if your mouse isn't over an instance. Now we're going to set up a couple scripts. The first script is going to be return button ID. It's not going to have any uh, parameters. It's simply going to return the button ID or no one. And we'll do this with with, manage, with mouse manager. 
return button ID return no one. And let me actually stop for a moment and explain this. I use this pattern a lot with we'll loop through all instances of an object. And here there will only ever be one instance of mouse manager and it will return that variable. If it doesn't find any instance of mouse manager, it will return no one. So with essentially acts as a built-in instance exists check and it won't crash your game if you're checking for mouse manager and no mouse manager exists. It will just return no one. One thing you could do is you can add a message down here as well, something like show debug message, uh, you know, no mouse manager. And then this would fire and indicate to you that there's a problem without actually crashing your game. For this tutorial though, I'm simply gonna leave it like this. We want a very similar script for button select. We'll say is, we'll say button is selected. We need to change all of this button is selected and it will return button selected or false. So we want to change it down here to be false and this should be button selected. And then finally, you'll notice that in our begin step event, we're not actually doing anything to button selected. And that's because we want to do that in the buttons themselves. So we're going to create a script and say set button selected set button selected true we'll have a param this time which will be a boolean and this will say set button selected to true or false and here we don't need a default case we can simply set this there's nothing to set if mouse manager doesn't exist. Okay, that's our mouse manager. Before I forget, let's put it in the room. So just to take a brief moment to review, we've created a mouse manager. That mouse manager is going to tell us at any given time whether or not the mouse is over a button, and if so, what's the instance ID of that button, and we'll also track whether or not a button is selected. Now let's actually go use this in our button object. So we'll come over here to button parent. We're going to need to have a new variable, button parent, button parent, and it will just be selected. We'll default it to false. And then in the step event, and this is why we needed it to be in the begin step event for our mouse manager, because now we can put this in the step event of button parent, Let's say update selected. And we can be guaranteed that the mouse manager will always be updated before any button parent checks this. So the first thing we want to do is we want to say update selected. And for this, we're going to say if no button is selected, then we want selected to equal, well, let me just type it out first and then explain it. Return button ID. So remember, our mouse manager is always tracking what button or what instance our mouse is over. And we can use return button ID to get that ID or that instance ID of what the mouse is over. So we want to know if the button that our mouse is over is equal to this current button. And if so, selected then will be true. So return button ID equals ID, this will evaluate the true, and then we will set selected to that value. If it did not evaluate the true, if it was no one or a different ID, these wouldn't equal, and this would be set to false. So if no button is selected, then we'll update our selected, we'll check to see whether or not we're selecting this button. Otherwise, and again, I'm gonna type this out and then explain it, return button ID does not equal ID. Selected equals false. So if there is a button selected, 
and it's not this button. So we're doing the same check here, but it's not this button. Then we know we're not selecting this button. We want to update that to false. Now we just want to have a variable up here, save previous state var previous selected equals selected. This will simply save the state of selected. And once we've done that, so we save the state of selected, then we update selected. And then if there's been a change, so that if previous selected does not equal selected, now we need to do two things. First of all, we need to set the button selected to be this value. And then we need to update the button itself. So this is our previous code that we had in the mouse enter and mouse leave. Now we're doing it in the step event. That's what happens if we become selected. And this is what happens if we become unselected. And now we can come over here and we can delete these events. We don't need the hover and we don't need the unhover. Okay, so now we've updated all of these buttons but I want to update the grabbable button as well because we got to make a couple changes there. First, in the grabbable button, we were overriding the mouse leave. That's unnecessary now. And we had our own create event that wasn't inheriting, so we need to inherit. Event inherited. And I like to add it up here as a note to myself because now I can come over here and I can see that we are in fact inheriting that prior event. And then we need to do one other thing. We need to come in here and we need to say grabbable parent inherited. And we just wanna say if grabbed exit. Now, why are we doing this? Well, let me put this code side by side here. Sorry, I had to make it a little bit smaller so it would fit. So this is how our buttons now update whether or not they are selected. More importantly, because of this section right here, only one button can ever be selected at any given time. So in our grabbed parent, what we are saying is if grabbed, don't run this code. So when our grabbed parent becomes selected, it's not grabbed at that point, so it will run this code and it will set our mouse manager's button to be selected. And then when we grab that button, we stop running this code. So now the mouse manager is always going to return selected because until we stop grabbing and until this code can run again, so it's deselected, no other button can be selected. So that should be it. Let's run it and see if I got it all right. Here we go. It doesn't appear to have affected anything. Everything still works exactly as we expected it to. And we can come down here, the real test, and nothing else gets selected. And again, that's because we now have a manager that's out there monitoring whether something is selected and only allowing one thing to be selected at a time. So once we select this, nothing else gets to be selected. And that's all of the code. In summary, managers can be helpful, but they shouldn't be overused. And a manager gives us a centralized abstracted interface that allows us to communicate data between instances of objects without those instances having to go check with every other instance in the room. Links to the source code, as always, will be below. And that's it. Thanks for watching.